Hey there guys. Today's project is going to be a follow-up on the last video you saw where I talked about the benefits of utilizing used file cabinets within your workshop or garage for storage or various other uses such as building a workbench. Well, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to use those very same file cabinets you saw from the last video to build a new miter saw station for my new Ryobi slider miter saw. So I'm going to grab the camera now. I'm going to take you inside, show you my current setup. Uh, some of the things I like about it and some of the reasons why I want to build a new one and then I will get on to the build. Um, as with the last few videos, I want to say thank you to the Home Depot Prospective and Ryobi Tools for sponsoring this video and uh, with that, let's get started. All right, so here is my current miter bench. This is what I've been using for the past few years, and overall, it's been a pretty decent miter station setup. I've got the drawers up top for kind of small, easily accessible items, and I've got some bulk storage down below with file cabinets and the four larger drawers. But it does have one fatal flaw, and that is because when I originally built this, I built it to allow me to have a lot of room to walk between these workbenches. And as I've worked in this shop, I've realized that I would prefer to have more bench space than space to walk around. And that also ties in nicely for needing a new bench for this new Ryobi slider miter saw, which requires a little bit deeper of a bench top. So that's what I'm gonna do. The design will be almost exactly the same as this with the exception of me using the three file cabinets that you saw in the video that I filmed a couple weeks ago as the base. And then I'll end up moving this file cabinet over underneath this workbench right there. And that is pretty much it. I will also be uh, adding an extension set on the side. I'll show you a couple clips of how that works. And then the last thing I'll do is be transferring these handles that I made onto the new bench. So that is pretty much it. So let me start cutting some plywood and we will see how this new bench turns out. Well, now that the boring process of removing the old miter saw station from the workshop is finally complete, I can start cutting the materials for the new and improved version of this miter saw station and for the initial task of making the long cuts on these full size pieces of plywood. I'm not going to be using my table saw, but I wanted to take the opportunity to show you guys how you can make the same type of cuts using just a circular saw, a straight edge, and some scrap pieces of wood set underneath the plywood. You'll see I am adjusting the depth of my blade to where it just barely passes through the plywood so it doesn't hit my workbench below. And you'll see the process is pretty simple. It takes a little bit of time to get set up, but if you don't have a table saw, you can make just as accurate and clean of cuts as you can with a table saw by using this technique. Now after making that initial cut, the two remaining pieces of plywood left on the workbench will be making up the top and bottom surfaces of the miter saw station. And here I am just cutting them down in length just a bit to better fit within the space that I have in my shop. And then I am using my table saw to rip a few pieces of plywood that will make up the back portion of the workstation as well as the sides and the drawer dividers. And here's the saw that will eventually be housed within this workstation.
All right, so the sun's been down for a while now, so I've had to break out all of my shop lights so I can continue working on this. Uh, but the basic framework of this miter bench is actually pretty close to being finished. Uh, the next thing I'll be doing is adding that piece of plywood you see leaning up against the shop onto this top surface, which is actually the bottom of the bench because this whole thing's gonna flip over. Um, but I wanted to answer a couple questions that I'm sure some of you may be wondering about while this is still open. And the biggest one I think most of you are wondering about is what the heck is this space back here? Well, that is going to be for long storage. I'll probably put a door here and a door on the other side so I can put long things in there. It does seem a little bit odd, but I kind of have a decent reasoning for it. Um, I had originally intended on making these drawers go all the way the entire depth of the bench, but that would mean I would have to order new drawer glides. And I still have about 10 pairs of these drawer glides. I think these are like 16 inches or 15 inches. So I figured I would just add that long storage in the back, shorten up my drawers, and uh, it would make good use of things that I already owned as well as the fact that this bench, when these drawers are open, um, if I was doing full length ones, might actually crowd the space inside a little bit too much. So now I'm gonna put that piece of plywood on and uh, I'll start making the drawers for this and then I'll show you how I'm gonna fit the saw into this little top area because, or once this is all flipped over. So right now I'm at the point where I am ready to install these drawer glides onto the drawers. And if you've ever worked with drawer glides like this, you'll know that the inside sections separate from the outside section so that you can simply take it off, attach it to the drawer, and then attach the larger section inside the drawer area, wherever you're gonna place it, and then simply connect them. But sometimes I like to uh, leave the glides uh, intact as they are so that I can get the proper spacing. And all I really do to ensure that that works is just add some sort of shim underneath the drawer. You'll see there's just a little piece of aluminum under there. And then I extend them out, make sure this section is completely down and flat. And then I line it up with here. And now I'm just gonna add my screws and then I'll separate them and then add the larger piece inside this drawer bank. At this point all the drawers have been installed and they all went in rather smoothly with the exception of the first one you saw me filming last night that drawer ended up being just a smidge too wide for the opening so i took it to the table saw and just ripped a little sliver off of it to narrow it down where the glides are 
but now it works perfectly smoothly. And what I'll do now is um, add a face frame to this. I'm gonna use this piece of plywood back there so that all the drawer fronts will have the same uh, plywood pattern on them. Now that I've got the drawer fronts on, I will take these drawers out and then secure the fronts from the inside of the drawer with screws. And then after that, I will fill all these brad nail holes, give the entire bench and the drawers a nice sanding, and then I will coat it in polyurethane. And then I will install the handles, which will be the same handles that I'm currently using on the current bench. And then the last thing I'll do is make a little flip out extension. It'll be almost exactly the same as the current one. Um, but all right, so I forgot to mention one thing that I need to do before I coat this in polyurethane and that is to cut two access doors on the rear portion of this miter bench. You can see I have it outlined right there and that is going to be for the long storage. So I'm going to put the hinges on bottom so they kind of flip down like that so that I can slide things in and out and they're not going to get caught on any lips. Well, there it is guys. It is finally installed and I think it turned out great. I have no doubt this is going to be a huge boost to my productivity as well as adding quite a bit of storage in the shop with the use of the file cabinets. And I know maybe not all of you will think the file cabinets look great, but I think they look pretty cool and I just love the practicality of them. So what I'll do now is give you a little bit of a walk around and show you a few things that I didn't cover during the build portion, like this extension, and then uh, I'll let you guys go. First up, I'll talk about the flip up extension since I didn't show building that within the video. And the reason for that is because it is constructed in the exact same manner as I built the rest of the bench. And I just didn't want to duplicate a bunch of video. And I figured focusing on the mechanism was more important anyway. Um, one thing I do want to point out is these open cubbies will eventually get some drawers like the rest of the workbench, but I just need to figure out a way to build a drawer that is useful in the horizontal position as well as the vertical position uh, when this thing is stowed down on the side of the bench. And I'll show you a couple clips of how it flips up and flips down and then I will just show you how the mechanism is under here. Really very simple, just uh, two hinges 
for the whole um, extension to hang from. And then I just have one piece of plywood that acts as the support leg. And that just fits in a little channel that I made out of some scrap plywood. And I simply put a stop block right there so that when it is pulled up, that can just rest on that stop block. And then when I just lift up a little bit on the extension, this leg comes clear and everything can uh, fold down. Next, I'll talk about the addition of aluminum on the bench, starting with the trim at the back. The reason for that aluminum trim is because the shipping container wall has just an ever so slight bow and that is just serving to seal up the gap between the wall and the workbench. And then the next piece of aluminum you see is the aluminum that is serving as the fence for the miter saw. And I've installed this with threaded inserts. You saw a little clip of it earlier. And then I just have these wing bolts that secure the fence to the workbench. And in the case of this side, I will always have this installed here because I just don't see needing this open space. But uh, the fence right here, you will likely see that be removed most of the time uh, just because I want this as a nice uh, large work area. Um, but I will eventually add an adhesive measuring tape onto this so that I can make quick repeated cuts and then I will devise some sort of stop device. But I haven't done that yet. I'll just use a clamp. As for the drawers, and file cabinets, well, I'll show some clips of them, but uh, they are what you would expect. Just places to store stuff. Before I discount the utility of those drawers too much, I almost forgot to mention the long storage in back. That is going to be my place to store those oddly long pieces of trim and aluminum that I don't really want to have stored on the lumber rack in my garage and I want to have easy access to. And it will also serve as the storage for this section of the miter fence that I've mentioned will most of the time not be on this portion of the bench. Well guys, that is gonna do it for this video. As always, I hope it was interesting and maybe gave you some ideas in case you happen to have some sort of workshop project or a workbench project in mind that maybe something I did here can give you an idea for that. Um, I'm thrilled with the way it turned out. Uh, number one, it gives me a ton of additional storage. And uh, as I mentioned in the last video, just another proof that file cabinets are probably one of the best workshop upgrades I think somebody can make. And this is gonna give me a ton of uh, more usable workspace inside the shop, uh, inside this little tiny shipping container shop. Um, when I first built this and all the workbenches in it, I really focused on keeping everything very narrow uh, so that I would have a lot of room to walk around. But as I've mentioned several times, I've kind of found out over the years, I don't need as much walking space as I need table space or work surface space. So uh, I don't know when this is gonna come out or if I'm gonna have another video before Christmas, but uh, if I don't see you, uh, Merry Christmas uh, or Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, I celebrate Christmas. Um, I hope you guys are well and uh, I will see you on the next one.